here to talk a little bit about apples, and then uh, we'll have a, uh, we're going to have some uh, tastings up here later on, as well as some cider to taste uh, from Paul. Apples are uh, obviously uh, most people know but didn't originate in, in North America. Uh, there, uh, they originated in uh, Eastern Asia. So uh, the the uh, Stan countries, Kazakhstan uh, and uh, Northern Iran, uh, is where they, uh, they they came from. They're going to have 25 minutes to do this, and while the 25 minutes is going on, Pat Mulvey, who I'll introduce in a second, um, is going to come, and we're going to talk to you about what's in your farmer, what's in your farmer's market basket. But they've been cultivated for as long as we have such civilizations or knowledge. At least for the last 6,500 years, we've got uh, um, archaeological evidence that the apples will be produced uh, throughout Mesopotamia. Uh, and by the time that the Romans uh, uh, traipsed into, into the British Isles, uh, they brought um, apples with them. When the buzzer goes off, we're going to ask, ask each chef to explain their dish. Pat's going to taste it. and tell you how yummy it is. Uh, things you're going to vote on are presentation, best use of local ingredients, and creativity around the dish. So to introduce Zeb Shapiro, who is a uh, yeah. volunteer, okay, all right, <laughs> among other things. And she's going to now present the mystery ingredients to the chefs. In, um, in terms of the varieties that we've got out here, uh, there are now, it's estimated, around 7,500 known <coughs> apple varieties. So there's over 7,000 known apple varieties. One of the reasons for that, uh, and one of the reasons why it's grown in, uh, uh, around the world, is because uh, it is, it doesn't breed true. Um, you cannot, uh, when an apple, you take a seed from any apple, in and plant it out and grow it out and the fruit from that seed from that tree that results won't look like the parent um, because of the complicated uh, set of the number of chromosomes uh, is, is, is a big factor. We were very kind so what we have is yellow shiitake mushrooms, corn, ground cherries and a hunk of gorgonzola cheese from Hooks Point. I'm hungry already. All right, we're going to give those poor chefs about 30 seconds here to think a little bit, and then we're going to set the timer. Can each of them tell us what their secret Yeah, you want to tell us what your secret ingredient is? An apple cider reduction. Uh, it's made from cider from Ela Orchard. Um, super deep apple flavor, pretty amazing. You can see it's like syrup, right? So All right. Peter, here's your mic right here. Glasses are part of my secret ingredient. <laughs> Well, Yummy. Um, <laughs> I th you gave me my secret ingredients, and so I'm. I, okay. this, I, they had the option. I, I, I work with what I've, I'm given and love. <laughs> and Stephen. Um, I brought uh, just some fresh thyme. We had some herbs. I wasn't sure what the herb was. There's lemon thyme in the pantry, and I brought some fresh thyme. So. Okay. On your mark, get set, and go. <laughs> So there's a widely diversified. Every time that that, uh, that you produce plant new seeds in the ground, uh, you get basically potential for new varieties. So in that genetic diversity that's been out there over the last 8,000 years, they've developed. They've been able to select trees that will grow in Chile, in the mountains, in Ecuador, uh, high in the mountains, in India, um, and and anywhere from uh, Maine to. Uh, California, Texas, uh, in the United States, for example. I'll tell you some of the ingredients that are up there, too, just so you know what they're going for. There are greens, um, including Swiss chard, arugula, and I believe collards. We have some heirloom tomatoes. We have uh, uh, green onions. We have uh, yellow onions, and we have garlic. We have hickory nuts. We have some various things like um, dried cherries and uh, dried cranberries and capers. We have a whole row of spices up there. That's the kind of local ingredient that's sort of hard to find <laughs> around here. We have a variety of fresh herbs, including some bay leaves, uh, some lemon thyme, some rosemary, some Thai basil, some, uh, what else, tarragon, uh, and I'm uh, missing apple one. Apple that are mature right now, and it'll increase a little bit over the next few weeks. Um, and 
got a, a place here on the square where you've got, I don't know, maybe a dozen or 15 or 20 possibly different orchards that sell their, their fruit here. And what I've found over the years is that, that apples can taste the same variety um, on the same dwarfing rootstock um, can taste completely different uh, when it's grown in in different parts of Wisconsin. Um, and and so since these guys come from various parts of Wisconsin, you might find the same apple tasting uh, much much different. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm not saying that some uh, some are uh, bad tasting or not, but but the variety of taste that you get uh, going from orchard to orchard is just phenomenal. There's uh, soil has a lot to do with it, obviously, in climate. So um, uh, the apple varieties we have here range from being softer uh, to being harder. And in America, we have a tendency to want to have an apple that's very hard, crisp, like a honey tree. for a demonstration, so we'll talk a little bit about presses, but I think we'll just let it do the talking for itself. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a nice old antique contraption, and, and that's how it was done. <clears throat> so you have a whole bunch of apples in the fall, and you want to enjoy them, so you make cider. The other thing is you want to preserve them, and that's partly where hard cider comes in, where you can ferment it, and it can keep forever, basically. The idea of squishing them is pretty simple, and you can see people get pretty creative, and most of the old machines are homemade. There was a picture of a how it's done modern where it's all sterile and clean and there's big hydraulic presses and the efficiency is probably a whole lot better but this certainly has character. Um, you can make your own homemade presses, find antique ones. Uh, basically two steps, obviously you're squishing your apples and getting all the juice out of them as you can. You can't just squish a whole apple, that you could, um, but it doesn't work as well. So the first step is you have to grind them up. So you grind them up into a mush and then you take the mush and you squish that and then that's where the juice comes out. Spent mush, um, which I think has a technical term, but I don't remember what it is, um, is great for animals. People use it for cattle feed. We have two goats at home that eat it all winter long. We freeze it because we usually press about, I don't know, eight or nine bushels. Um, How about uh, more what's in your farmer's market bag? Tracy, you have a bag right here. here. What okay, do you got? Good. Apples, some carrots, and two varieties of onions. Two varieties of onions with apples and carrots. You can shred those carrots and those apples and the onions and make a really nice slaw with some mint. That would be a nice way to combine all of those. Another favorite of mine for carrots is, is uh, roasting them and then tossing them with a little bit of honey and butter and a little bit of balsamic vinegar or other vinegars. Was there a hand over here? All the way back. dinosaur kale. Um, I opted to use that and cook down some onions and some of the ham uh, and then some chuck some of the fresh corn that we had. Kind of started that cooking down and then put the kale in there 
Um, use a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of balsamic vinegar that here, and then finish it with the ground cherries, which was so the corn and the ground cherries are both a uh, a uh, mark or basket um, item. So I went a little sweet, a little you know creamy with that, and then I opted to make a sandwich with some salami that was over here, and I sautéed the uh, mushrooms with a little bit of rosemary, just kind of going, kind of going out there, trying it, huh? <laughs> The cheese is in, the blue cheese is in the Lacinto kale, and it's a beautiful balance. The, the creaminess in the blue cheese with the sweetness of the kale and the st slightly sour crunch from the um, ground cherry is really, really nicely balanced. She's so um, lucky she gets to actually try them. Mm, it's really good. <laughs> Well, first of all, we started with great market ba basket ingredients. The shiitake mushrooms, uh, I feel, just needed their own highlight, didn't want to hide them, so I just gave them a nice slice, so I had a good presentation, fried them, and that was essentially my top two. The, um, I took the p pasta sheet and I stuffed it with sautéed uh, kale with uh, corn, let that cool down a little bit, blended in the gorgonzola cheese. So it's, a, it's an egg pasta sheet that's uh, stuffed with kale, corn, gorgonzola, topped off with the shiitake mushroom and uh, with a little garnish of the roasted poblano, uh, pan roasted. Uh, I, I used two plates because the color. I, you know, the panzanilla salad really had to go stand on its own. He can't I mean, follow the rules. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Yeah, it's all right. Um, what I did is I, 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 in the panzanilla salad, it's you know, typically mixed with vinaigrette. Uh, the ground cherries are a wonderful mix of kind of a tart, sweet, so I did a, uh, a vinaigrette of ground cherry, uh, sherry vinegar, uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Very simple that way. Uh, tossed with uh, Madison sourdough bread, um, very thinly sliced onion, and, uh, and the heirloom tomato uh, with a little bit of the Thai basil. And um, that's what we got. I'm trying not to um, ruin the presentation. I tried to bite on the side so you could see this really pretty um, way that he put together the mushrooms poking out of the top. It looks like a little sea creature poking out of the top of the lasagna noodles. Really nice balance of spicy flavors. This is a very pretty blend. I like the herb in here um, with the, with the um, panzanella salad and the ground cherry works really beautifully in there. It's almost um, counterbalancing the sweetness in the tomato with its slight tart crispiness. It's really, really good textural add-in. I like it. Okay. Wow. So, um, I, I made a salad. Um, you know, for me, one of the things I really like to do is um, take food and let it be what it is. Um, so, what I have here is I have a, the fresh kale. Um, I use the ground cherries, the hickory nuts, the shaved corn, and uh, I sauteed the mushrooms and some garlic with some salt. And I just put a tiny bit of blue cheese on top of the salad and a little on the side. It's very strong and you can almost kind of like mash it into your salad as you go. But it's, it's pretty intense flavor on there. So um, I just kind of left it on top. But I think all together, like all the flavors with the, the deep flavor of the oyster mushrooms and the blue cheese and the ground cherries being like having that really intense kind of sweet flavor too, I think it works really well. Mm -hmm.